Based in Berlin, Germany, Ifra is one of the biggest tech trade shows around, and it's also one of the oldest, with a 93-year history behind it. That's Albert Einstein right there, opening Ifa number 6 back in 1930. These days, Ifa serves as a platform for just about anything with a chip or a radio antenna, whether it's a computer, a connected device, or part of the nebulous mass that we know as IoT. In recent times, it's always been a big launch venue for Android phones, though, and this year is no exception. So let's jump into our preview and find out what to expect from Android at Ifa 2017. So the biggest, meatiest announcement of the show should come from LG, which is poised to release the V30 as a successor to last year's V20, and also in a way a successor to the G6 as well. Thanks to a steady stream of leaks, we know quite a lot about the V30 already. It'll use a metal and glass sandwich design like the G6, but with an OLED display and curved glass on the front. Though based on some leaked pictures, it seems the screen itself might not be curved. On the inside, your standard flagship smartphone specs, Snapdragon 835, 6 gigs of RAM, 64, 128 gigs of storage. In terms of size, rumors point to a 6 inch 18 by 9 display, which at that aspect ratio isn't particularly big. However, there have been reports of a possible LG V30 Plus coming alongside the regular V30 with more internal storage and wireless charging, as well as maybe a bigger display as well. It's not clear whether this model will be released outside of the Korean market though. Cameras have always been a big part of the V series and the V30 looks set to bring a main camera with a super bright f1.6 lens, likely alongside some kind of upgraded wide angle shooter. And there are new camera tricks in the software as well. LG's built out a new feature called Graphy, which lets you share and download manual camera settings for different kinds of shots. That's just part of a bunch of new changes in the V30 software that LG teased recently. Some of these features are straight up cloned from the Galaxy S8, like the new floating bar which lives on the edge of the display and replaces the largely useless ticker display from the V10 and V20. The V series has always been LG's testing ground for crazy new features, but this year it actually looks like being a solid phone, or possibly phones, in its own right. But we'll have to see whether it can do enough to avoid getting completely steamrolled by the Galaxy Note 8. Samsung's going early with the Note 8 this year, which is actually a bit weird because its IFA press conference takes place just a week later in Berlin. In any case, with the Note 8 already announced, we're most likely dealing with new wearables and maybe some other connected gadgets from Samsung. This year, it looks like Samsung's bringing it back to fitness wearables. Evan Blass of VentureBeat has leaked details of a Gear Fit 2 Pro, which, as the name suggests, is an upgraded version of last year's Samsung fitness band. Supposedly, there'll also be a new watch-style clasp option instead of the rubber clasp included with the previous model. Blast says there'll be an updated backwards compatible Gear VR model on show too, though there's no word on what exactly is new there. Finally, Samsung might unveil a spiritual successor to my favourite smartwatch of all time, the Gear S2. A watch bearing the name Samsung Gear Sport passed through the FCC recently with a backplate almost identical to the 2015 model. No other details here, but expect it to be cheaper and more mainstream focused than either the Fit2 Pro or the Gear S3. Sony always brings plenty of new toys to IFA, and this year it looks like we're in for a trio of new phones. Though potentially nothing to use up the 4K screened Xperia XZ Premium at the very high end. Yes, the nightmarish alphabet soup of Sony phone branding continues with an Xperia X1, Xperia XZ1, and XZ1 Compact purportedly coming at IFA according to a report from Android Pit. The X1 apparently is a new mid-ranger running a Snapdragon 660, 4 gigs of RAM, and with a 19 megapixel camera. Meanwhile, the XZ1 and XZ1 Compact take the guts of the XZ Premium and downscale them into two smaller sizes. The regular XZ1 is rumored to take that Snapdragon 835, 4 gigs of RAM and the impressive slow motion camera and bring it to a phone with a 5.2 inch 1080p display. And the Compact, as you'd expect from the name, supposedly goes all the way down to 4.6 inches, also at 1080p. So really not a whole lot to get super excited about here unless you are a fan of much smaller phones. The one glimmer of real interest for me comes from leaked software details suggesting these new Sony phones might actually run Android O out of the box, potentially a first in any new handset, although who knows when any of these will actually go on sale. Lastly, but by far the most important point for anyone in the United States, will this finally be the year that Sony releases a phone in America with a working fingerprint scanner? Has whatever deal they did with whichever US carrier expired so they can actually release a phone with working biometrics and not disable it in software like they've been forced to do in the past? We'll find out in Berlin in just a couple of weeks.
So the BlackBerry Key 1 has been surprisingly well received since it launched in the spring, and BlackBerry is teasing a new limited edition version at IFA. And the title of this YouTube teaser doesn't leave much to the imagination. It is, of course, the BlackBerry Key 1 Black Limited Edition. My pal Michael Fisher has already reviewed the so-called VadaBerry, which boasts more RAM and internal storage as well as dual SIM support, in addition to that fresh coat of paint. So far it's only been announced for the Indian market, but with a big teaser for IFA it's possible that a wider launch is coming soon. Huawei has a press conference scheduled towards the end of IFA Media Week on September 2nd, but it's not clear if there are any new products coming. Last year at IFA it launched the Nova series, the Nova 2 already arrived in China over the summer, so that is one possibility. But instead, the presentation from CEO Richard Yu is likely to focus on AI and all the new and amazing and sometimes terrifying things that can enable. Maybe new Huawei phones, maybe not. Either way, we're still a few months out from the next big thing from them. That'll be the Mate 10 later in the autumn. So that's what we're expecting from Android at EFA 2017. Stick with us on AndroidCentral.com in the run-up to the show and subscribe to us here on YouTube so you don't miss our videos from Berlin. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.